to get involved with how was everything set up to bring in the costuming for this version of the Wizard of Oz and try and did you use a lot of the old footage from the original Wizard of Oz to bring into this new feature film? No, we actually we actually didn't use any footage of uh, we were we were just saying we didn't look at the other film uh, at all after mm -hmm. we got we started this project. Uh, I particularly didn't want to have a, I wanted to have an idea, which I did. It's such an iconic movie. I had the feeling of that movie in my head, but not specifics, because I didn't think that it was fair to have those images so close to mm -hmm. the front of my brain. Mm -hmm. Kunis's character, mm -hmm. uh, with the makeup and everything, and with the Wicked Witches and everybody else in the film that needs a lot of, how was that all developed? And, Transcribed. Well, the first thing, um, we it, it was such a massive amount of people in so many different um, groups of people within the kingdom, not including just the cast mm -hmm. as well. And Howard Berger was brought on to handle the prosthetic mm -hmm. makeup, which would be, the Wicked Witch would be under that part mm -hmm. of the makeup. And him and Sam worked very closely on it to come up with a look that was very current and very, but very challenging makeup to have to do. You have to fit the person who's going to wear it. You have to fit um, that it's a new film. You don't want it to look like the old one. You don't want it, you have to, to be new. But So it was a very challenging job and Howard did many sketches and uh, he tested it a number of times and it was, he, the, the final product was amazing and beautiful. The rest of the looks kind of the same thing. We all, um, we, we start with reading your script and talking to Sam and looking at the sketches for production design and the long journey of how everything comes together to the final product is it takes months. So how was it working with Sam again? Uh, you had worked, both of you have worked with him with yes. in the Spider-Man film. Mm -hmm. uh, how was it working with him at that, with that film in difference to this film? I, I, I have to say that uh, this was different in that this had a uh, this had a, a world that didn't, wasn't connected to anything real, mm -hmm. to, uh, you know, New York City streets, which are, is where Spider-Man takes place. Uh, and, uh, and so for that, we had, uh, I, I felt there was a, a bit of more freedom uh, for this, uh, to experiment, to try new things. But as far as the relationship with Sam, Sam always is very clear about telling you what he wants to see, but not how to accomplish it. Mm -hmm. And so he leaves that to, to us exactly. to, to do, and it is, it's such a joy to then bring him the options and ideas that we have. Yeah, mm -hmm. Sam's a very, um, he's very present as a director, mm -hmm. but yet never, he's never really in your space. He gives you a tremendous amount of freedom. I don't quite know how he does it. It's, um, it's mm -hmm. uncanny in mm -hmm. its own right. But um, I was going to say something else, but I got distracted, sorry. Um, let's just go on and I'll get to it later. Okay. <laughs> uh, is there a difference between, uh, with especially now with the new technologies with H high definition and using high rate film rates and 3D, is there a different way of doing your job of making costumes and how they come out to the screen and your art is it always a process that you're thinking of especially with costumes and makeup well i would have to say that i as long as there is a chance to test the costume and the colors and once that's done and once you are have agreed upon mm -hmm. the palette and the the uh, the palette is really mm -hmm. the the point of that for for me as a costume designer once you've agreed on that then we go about making the best costume we can, both inside and out. So that is, uh, that is the difference. But that test is really important to us. I think the digital cameras bring a different world into makeup, um, and prosthetic makeup and makeup. And for this film, with some of the colors that were a part of it, the, the digital camera did bring not a challenge in a bad way, but it certainly required a lot of thought. It required a lot of testing. Mm -hmm. The other thing is those cameras see much better than we do, and it's 3D, yeah. and it's projected quite large. Mm -hmm. So 
every character, even the background characters, need to be done with the same finesse mm -hmm. as the lead characters, but it also ups the ante of the lead characters. That right. They need to be done, mm -hmm. their makeups are somewhat under a microscope, even bigger than what you yeah. see yourself to be. So the work that is done by everyone has to be precise absolutely precise in everything they do and the detail to attention mm -hmm. has you know is everything and again back to sam that was one of the things he provides an environment for everyone to work there's a tremendous amount of respect that he gives to every member of his crew yeah. and i've never seen a man walk into a stage so quiet and have a crew so respectful to him mm -hmm. because he respects and honors every craft that's yeah. in there yeah. absolutely. well thank you very much for meeting with us really appreciate it and Odds of Great and Powerful is out on March 8th. Follow us at whosyourmoves.com for more information.